I was the only guy that made black belt for my school. I mean, for my class, rather. I was told the very first night, less than 6% of you will make brown belt. Of that, less than 2% will make black belt. Welcome to martial arts. That was my motivational speech. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only guy that did it. And it's because we took serious beatings like that on a regular basis. A lot of us did. What does that do for you? Creates baggage. This is the way that I was taught. This is how I'm going to teach. All of that, I mean, that was perpetuated in the schools and on the big screen in the media up until 1984, 85, of course, and we know what happened then. That's when the Karate Kid film broke. And that was a real good wake-up call for all of us. Remember, the Karate Kid was written by a fifth-degree black belt. He understood the real benefits of martial arts. He understood the real spiritual qualities of martial arts. And he wrote a script based upon Mr. Miyagi that illustrated that to the world. And it was a huge hit. What happened to our martial arts schools? We were swamped with children. Did that kind of upbringing prepare you for children? Not even close. Instructors were overwhelmed. So they started to work towards more philosophical messages in their classes. They started to actually network. Parents realized that martial arts could be a great supplement to their children's education. And they flocked to the schools, literally by the millions over the course of the next decade. It's heartbreaking that we weren't ready for it. It's heartbreaking that our baggage prevented us from really helping these people. And I say that because millions of people also dropped right out again. When they were presented with a program they weren't ready for, it was too much for them, it was just too hard, it was not age appropriate, it was not skill appropriate, it was not professional. I'm not talking about a black belt club. I'm not talking about an excellent enrollment conference. I'm simply saying the teaching methodologies were not ready for this. So what happened? Instructors started the network. What am I going to do with these kids? Joe, what am I going to do? This guy's got 300 students. Talk to him. How did you get 300 students? Oh, you did that? Okay, okay. So there was starting this, this networking thing, which is a beautiful thing. It's continuing to this day. But for the most part, it was still hand-me-down teaching, which is what baggage is all about. It's hand-me-down teaching, starting back from the earliest days. Any gimmick, strategy, or idea that would improve retention was considered valid. The criteria for success went from quality of students to quantity of students. Not a good point in our history. Students, ra instructors, rather than being strict about the technical requirements of a rank, started to push kids through the ranks. Uh, it's, it's good for his self-esteem. If he fails the test, he may drop out. No, 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 no. And what happens is the quality of black belt has dropped significantly. You guys go to any camps, the quality of black belt's not what it was 10 years ago. So we have to get on track in our teaching. One of the flip sides to this is the money issue. Most martial artists are sincere, hardworking, caring guys and girls. They really do care about their art, they care about their school, they want the best for the students. But where there's money, and there's been a big influx of money in this industry over the course of the past decade, there's going to be problems. And we know that there has been a push towards legislature to regulate martial arts in this country. In your handouts is an article that was just emailed to me on Monday. But we have a couple other examples, I think, that may open your eyes to some of the potential problems if we do not do some self-policing and some cleaning up of the methodologies of our industry. If your kids want to be the next Bruce Lee, there are plenty of places ready to help. But a Nightbeat investigation finds just because somebody claims to be a black belt doesn't mean they are. As Nightbeat investigator Tony Fama reports, your kids could be in for a lot more pain than pleasure. But some karate students say that many instructors get away with fraud and physical abuse in karate schools because the parents never check the instructor's credentials have documented how the schools operate like a cult and exploit students. Former students of some Bay Area schools claim they are victims of con games, fraud, and even abuse. In part one of our series, Pulse 13's Deborah Becker takes a closer look at black belt scandal. A national chain of martial arts schools, some of which have used mind control techniques to intimidate and exploit believers. Sir Michael Fells has survived a series of Herculean challenges to earn the prized rank of fifth degree black belt. 
Bob McKenzie has the story, and we warn you, some scenes may be disturbing. Things seemed to go wrong for Fell when he attempted to break seven stacked up cinder blocks. <laughs> then a sheet of quarter inch glass. <laughs> For the climax, Grandmaster Kim pushed steel pins through her students' arms. Then she had buckets of water hung from the pins. Then commanded him to walk across a bed of red hot coals. Don't make him feel. You become their correction. You are the warrior. Come. Show the word. You are the truth master. Let me introduce you to Japonica. Now, Japonica may look like a dog, but she also has her own certificate. No, you're not reading it wrong. That does say Black Belt Bureau. You've got it. Japonica is considered a fifth degree black belt. That means she's allowed to teach Kung Fu. There's not a single law in the books regulating the martial arts business. So if you get hurt in class, you can sue, but you can't close them down. We looked for people's weaknesses. We would spend time in groups going over each individual student uh, and determining how to best hit their mind as it was put. For example, constantly repeating a movement or holding poses for long periods on orders from their instructor. What happens is that they go into an altered state of consciousness. In that type of altered state, they be, they're very susceptible to suggestions. It's the same kind of thing that takes place in a hypnotic trance. This former instructor says that when he quit several years ago, the head of the school, who's no longer there, threatened to have him killed. There's a lot of people listening to every word that the higher belts say, and they'd do anything, even kill somebody, if they were told to kill somebody. Do you really think that? Sure. At school ceremony, she was amazed at the glazed look in the student's eyes. It was like a brainwashing. His whole life was waiting for someone else to dictate to him what to do, when to eat, when to move, when to breathe. Her um, son changed from abhorring uh, violence to showing her how he could pull someone's arm out of its socket. He said, and then you would swing it at the person. And he says, that alone would put them in shock and you would have won the competition. And I'm like, you're talking about dismembering people? It's hard to check the credentials of any martial arts instructor because there are no recognized boards in this country to approve the schools or certify their staffs. But there are state laws to protect students from being conned. Former students say they were pressured to sign contracts and spent as much as $50,000. To get their money, some instructors badgered them with questions. Did you have any stocks or bonds that you could sell? Do you have a grandparent or a relative with money that would be willing to finance your black belt program? They wanted your money. That's all they wanted was your money. In just two years, this instructor signed three contracts for lessons, the largest for $36,000. He was about to sell his business and sign a fourth contract, a certificate course that costs as much as $100,000. Former students say they were told to pay in cash. What instructors always told us is that was the best way to show respect. And they were told it's disrespectful to ask for copies of their contracts. I said, may I please have a copy of that? Well, there's no, what's the matter? Don't you trust us? And far be it for me to tell somebody who can terminate my life in two seconds, you know, you know I don't trust you. We've had complaints about most of the schools operating in the Chicago area. 
A spokesman for the owners told us they are simply a group of young businessmen trying to help people. This student says that when he quit last year, he turned down his instructor's invitation to discuss the decision at the school. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. They had swords and knives and spears and all of those things are very intimidating. You were scared to go back to the school? Oh, definitely. Because you thought they would hurt you in some way? Sure. Do the schools try to intimidate students? Not that I know of. I'm told by an instructor, former instructors, that they're trained to be intimidating. That's not true. But in several conversations, the same school officials threatened me if I pursued this investigation. Santi Furio said the school owners will come after you. They're not a gentle group. And Nick Gallo, an attorney for the schools, said the school owners are rockheads who act before they think. He said if I drop the story, they'll back off. If I didn't, he feared an accident is coming. With, uh... He said if I drop the story, they'll back off. If I didn't, he feared an accident is coming. With uh, four pulled tendons up here, I ended up... Andy Mann says broken. a couple of years ago, he was taking a martial arts yeah. class. That's the wrong way, and that was slow. It wasn't until he met with his doctor that he realized his instructor didn't teach him how to fall properly. You're going to get tendonized in any athletic activity, but there's no sense in doing something wrong and bringing it on. Mance questions the qualifications of some martial arts instructors, and so did we. If you wanted to, you could go out and buy a belt and buy a videotape and study the tape and watch it and, and then try to open your own school. I'd like to open a karate school. As easy as paying $15 to $30, as the Pasco County Occupational Licensing Department agreed to let me demonstrate. Keep in mind, I'm not really getting a license. Okay.